Welcome to another beautiful day in paradise. The uh, forecast rain has not hit yet, so I'm going to take a look at this car. I should be finishing Rita the Rover. There's still her acoustic pad hasn't been fitted, the air intake trumpet, but uh, I'm not seeing that as too important at the moment. Just drawing it um, air from the warm engine bay, that's surely a good thing this time of year. But the brakes on Chemula Charade here started getting a bit scrapey. It's mostly just as you set off and they do seem to get better. So it could just be rust that's building up. Alloy wheels allow a lot of moisture onto the brakes. And it's just that time of year where everything's damp. But none of the other cars are doing scrapey brake noises. So I think it's probably a good idea, as I never have, to have a look at what's going on. So without further ado, uh, I'll grab a jack, a wheel brace, and we shall set to. All right, wheel nuts cracked off. Let's jack up the car. Just grab an axle stand. Yeah, these new trousers have knee pads built in. Absolutely marvellous. I'm loving life at the moment. Yeah, it's good to put this under, I wonder. Let's get a bit more. Oh, steady now. Okay. Yes, this is my first day of freedom. No longer having to do the uh, home education. Uh, Miss Hubnuth has that bullet today. I'm not saying I'm not going to do any more. But it's nice to have a day where I haven't got to think about it. Oh good, wheel nuts rather than wheel bolts. That makes life so much easier. Although I might just grab a magnetic tray. Just so I don't lose them. There we go. Oh yeah, yeah, things are changing here on Hubnut. Uh, I'm still an incompetent mechanic, but you know, I've got stuff. I've got nice clothes that look after my knees a bit better. I've got magnetic parts things, so my uh, nuts and bolts don't go flying, never to be seen again. It's a new regime, I'm telling you. There we go. Huh, well, that looks much as you'd expect. To be honest, look at this tiny little disc, especially after you've been working on the Rover. But I can see both pads have still got plenty of meat on this side. And they look to be wearing pretty evenly. The caliper I can see is moving back and forth quite nicely. So while there's a bit of rust around the edge of the disc, let's take my gloves off. Yeah, there's a little bit of a wear lift, but not much. Uh, I don't think we've got much to worry about here. But if I take you off here, we can see that really everything seems to be in order. I mean, you get rusty discs here, that just happens. But uh, there's not a huge amount of wear on the pad, so it might be worth checking some new ones in. But they're definitely not scraping on the metal. And you can see the other pad in there. It's about 50% backing material, 50% pad. So these sliders, looks like someone's been in here lubing them up. At some point, they all seem good, and the wear is even, so uh, I think we can say that's okay. But at least we've had a look. The backing plate isn't in the best shape, but it is still there. So I think we'll say that's good enough. But yeah, you can see the mud that's starting to build up this time of year in rural Wales. Not very good. See some rust creeping into that seam. But uh, the, pro the problem I have is the car needs to be dry to apply any rust proofing to it and trying to dry a car this time of year is just nonsensical so I think we'll see how the MOT goes in March and then if all goes well we'll look to do some more rust proofing in the summer months when hopefully things dry out a bit but yeah I'm gonna say that's okay on this side so let's go and have a look at the other side it's exactly the same on this side now you can see where the braking action this morning has cleared some surface rust off, so I think that's what it is. And perhaps it's just because it's a fairly low budget car. McPherson struts tend to be very good at transforming, transferring noise into the car. Uh, perhaps that's what it is. Let's just see if this kind of feels as free. Oh, it actually doesn't. I can move the other caliper around a bit, this one quite so keen so maybe it'd be worth just um, pulling the pins out just to see what state they're in 
Well, I'd say that was worth doing. Look at the state of that. Very sticky. I had to use a hammer to push that out, even when it had unscrewed. So I think we better see if we can clean that up and uh, get some lube on it. That's not in great shape. Of course, this is the near side one and the near side one in the UK, uh, well, in most countries, uh, travels in the gutter, picks up more muck. Well, I can see a little ring of red rubber grease there. But well, yeah, we'll see if we can clean this up. After a fair old session of trying to clear this pin up, um, I'm forced to conclude that's not a very nice looking pin. So I think seeking some replacements might be a good idea. It's quite badly pitted. There's a big lump of something there that I can't shift. Uh, I've used a very fine sandpaper. You don't want anything too aggressive because you don't actually start ripping into the surface. But I think we're nearing the stage where it's just going to have to be lube and hope. But yeah, replacing those pins is going to be a good idea, I think. And uh, it might be an idea to do the pads while we're at it, fresh pads while we're in there. That's okay, Miss Hubman's quite interested in learning about brakes. And she can learn how awful sliding pin calipers are, because they are terrible. Well, I've used red caliper grease because I can't find my uh, favourite um, Ceratec or whatever it is, the Mintec stuff. But um, yeah, I had to hammer that out. Whereas now it seems to be sliding quite nicely. So we'll do that back in. So 14 mil. Okay. Feel a bit more confident this might actually work. And then we'll whip the bottom one out and do the same, I think. I'm starting to think I should have done this on the other side just as a precautionary measure. But there we go. Right. Don't use the ratchet to do full tighten. Try and get the rubber to actually stay where it should do as well. There we go. Yeah, that, that gator isn't really attached at that end. So that's going to allow muck in. That might explain why we're having some difficulties. See if we can get the other side undone. Unfortunately, this is going to involve lying on the ground, I feel. It's one of those jobs where... Oh, brainwave. Oh, I just had a big brain moment. Where you think an impact driver will help, and it probably won't. But what might help is doing this. Ah, genius, eh? Shut up, bleeping car. Why didn't I think of that earlier? Now I can get a full swing. Not that that's necessarily helping. Oh, that definitely started moving then. Oh yes, there we go. Again though, it's uh, very tight. I think we've got a similar issue. In fact, probably worse with this bottom pin. Ugh. Yeah, I think I'll be smacking this one out with a hammer as well. So I think that's out on the thread now. And it should just pull out. But not a bit of it. There we go for a smaller hammer for this. I'll bring you in so you can hopefully see what I'm about. Oh, jeepers. That definitely out. Yeah, that's not unscrewing anymore. Ah. Oh. There we go. So as a point of reference, the one on the top has an extra little bit on the top. But yeah, that's not good. It doesn't actually look that stuck, but clearly there's no lubrication going on. So again, give that a clean up and we'll lube it up and get it back in. That smells disgusting. I don't know why I sniffed it. Yeah, cleaned up again. You can see it's um, a pretty pitted mess really, but we'll, we haven't got new ones here. It's gonna take several days to get them in. So we'll go for the meantime solution of a bit of splodge. And hopefully that will now slide in and out nicely. That, that's certainly a lot nicer than it was. 
I think the problem with any lube on these items is just gonna congeal eventually. I know some people reckon you shouldn't use any, some reckon uh, you should definitely use something. So uh, yeah, jury's out on what's best for these, but certainly just leaving them sitting there, I would say not ideal. There we go. Get the wheel back on and we, we know what needs to be done. Um, discs look okay, if a bit rusty. So maybe I'll price up the whole lot and we'll do a full brake refurb. That'll be educational for Miss Hubnut and possibly for myself. Now Daihatsu is no longer in the UK. In fact, they're um, now purely a Japanese market brand. Uh, so that does leave some difficulty with getting parts, but in the UK at least, uh, they were imported by the same importer who imports Subarus. So um, that leaves some hope that uh, might actually be able to get some bits. But the Sherrard sold in um, pretty strong numbers, or the Kawore in Japan, not Japan, in Europe. So uh, yeah, hopefully they are actually out there and we can get the bits quite easily. These alloys could do with a refurb. If I was a really bad curb ding in this one, but um, I'm not actually a fan of alloys and I think these ones look horrible. But it's not my car, it is Miss Hubnut's car. She can do with it as she pleases. Right, yes, let's just um, do this slightly tight while she's on the axle stand and final tightening when she's on the ground, of course. In other Daihatsu news, what's the smoke like? Well, let's fire her up and I'll show you. Now, the engine is not cold cold, but it's not warm warm. Yeah, if you do that when cold, then um, she does smoke a little, it would seem. Yeah, <laughs> at some point we're going to have to make some longer term um, decisions about this engine. Uh, the other day we, we um, had a horrendous experience at a notorious pizza retailer uh, involved us sitting outside waiting for almost half an hour running the engine on occasions and you could see a little pool of um, oily condensate building up behind the car so I think that tells you all you need to know really this is still not a happy engine so we may yet have to get into uh, doing something about that but uh, for now we are where we are with the brakes. Uh, she is where she is with the smoke. She is what she is with the horrible beeping noises. But we can conclude that, yeah, that's about it for this video. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget, um, you can head to the Hubnut store and buy lovely merchandise if you wish at hubnut.org. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell.